Welcome. And so the first thing we want to do is download Anaconda. And we go to www.anaconda.com and download Anaconda. So you want to go here to download Then here to Mac OS, and you'll see 3.6 and 2.7. Now, being that we are Swift developers, and that from time to time we may use Core ML tools, we would choose the 2.7 because it is the only one that works with Core ML tools. So you'll want to select that one. So go ahead and download that, pause this video, and when you're done downloading it, go ahead and restart the video. If you would like, you could actually go ahead and open it up after it is installed. It's pretty straightforward um, and painless to do. Once you open up Anaconda, you'll see different interfaces that you can choose from. So go ahead and choose Jupyter and open that up and you'll be all caught up to continue with this lesson. So in this lesson, we are going to work with the Wisconsin Breast Cancer Dataset, and we are going to look at a few different functions. Python, IPython is the default for Jupyter, and as Swift developers, I can tell you it's a lot easier even than is Swift you'll see a lot of the same syntax with actually less things that you have to do to actually implement the syntax. So it is pretty straightforward and painless. So the first thing we want to do is import our data set. So we'll do that now. And from scikit-learn, we loaded the data set called breast cancer. Next, we are going to be working with a classifier called KNN for K nearest neighbor. And you'll understand that a little bit better a little bit later in this course. So we want to import the K neighbors classifier and we want to import the model to split the data, some to test on and some to train with. For the neural network. So let's do that now. Next we need to import matplotlib so we can have a visual, a more visual, of what's going on with the data. Next we will assign the data set to a variable. Now in Swift, we use var, or if we had a constant, we would use let. But with IPython, you just name the variable and allocate it to what it is that you're trying to assign it to. So let's do that now. And let's just print a description of that data set. And to print, you just write print and open parentheses and close parentheses will automatically be added for you. But the syntax is the same when you're printing uh, something like in the console in Swift. And we'll run it and you'll see a description of our data. So you see we have 569 instances in our data set with 30 attributes. So that would be the number of samples times the number of features, which is the n samples by n features matrix, which is the x and the y, which is also to say the rows and columns. So next we'll print out the feature names. And as you can see, these are the features in the data set. So next, let's print out the outputs or the target names. And you see the outputs are either malignant or benign. 
So now that we see the columns and the targets, let's print out the data itself. And as you can see, here is the data. And it is in the form of an array, a type NumPy array. And as you can see, it's a NumPy array. So next, let's get exactly how many end samples and end features do we have in this matrix, which is to say how many rows and how many columns of data. And to do that, you use data.shape. So we have 569 instances of rows with 30 columns. So let's get a more usable form of data, the pre-processed clean data in a comma separated value file. So we'll go over here to Google and we'll type in breast cancer, Wisconsin data dot CSV with the hyphens. The very first one you'll see on there is the one you want. We'll go to the data folder, click on that. Then you'll go to breast cancer, Wisconsin data, click on that. And that is the raw comma separated value file or CSV that you want. So you'll go up. Here, click File and Save Page As. And probably best to keep it on your desktop. You can save it right now as is and then change it to a CSV on your desktop. Or you can actually do it here CSV and then click Save. And it'll be on your desktop. Once you do that, go home in Anaconda, go over to where it says Upload, and find that file, click it, and then click Upload. As you can see, I've already got it. So that, that's what you need to do. <clears throat> and once you do that, go back to the tab where our project is, Data Science for Swift Developers. And we can now work with the KNN classifier with good pre-processed raw data. So let's first import pandas to help us format that data in a fancy looking chart, if you will. And I'm just calling the raw data that we just uploaded. And so we don't want the whole thing. We're just going to pull the last 10 files. Or I shouldn't say files, the last 10 uh, rows in the matrix or the data frame. So let's see what that looks like. So here we go. Next, we're going to use something called MG Learn, and more than likely, you probably have to import it. So you have to pip install that, and to do that, you'll use the exclamation point pip install MG Learn. 
like so. And then run that. That should take every bit of maybe 20 seconds, depending on how fast your Mac is. I've already got it installed. And so after that, we're going to go ahead and say import mg learn. And we'll say mg learn dot plots. dot plot underscore k nearest neighbor k and n classification and we'll use five of its nearest neighbors we'll run that So we have the training classes. The circle represents malignant. The triangle represents benign. We have the samples, which are on the stars, the test samples, with again the blue star representing malignant at zero and the amber star representing or orange representing benign so here you see the test sample and it uses one two three, four, five of its nearest neighbors, which are all malignant. So this would be malignant. Over here, we have one, two, three of the neighbors are benign, with one, two being malignant so that would come out as B9 the third sample shows one two malignant and one two three four that are B9 and that comes out as B9 the seventh neighbor is using this particular sample so that comes out as B9. I can shorten up this to look at fewer neighbors. Let's make it three. And then run it. So three neighbors here. Malignant. Two B9. One malignant. So B9 sample here. One malignant, two benign neighbors, which averages out to be a benign sample. So let's go back to our original data set from Scikit-Learn. So now we'll train and test our model, split the data, call the classifier, call KNN fit to get the algorithm.
then we'll run it. And you see the algorithm for our KNN classifier. You see the algorithm. You see the leaf size. There's five neighbors. And the weights are uniform. So let's print out the accuracy of the prediction of the KNN neighbors algorithm. So we are going to print out the accuracy of the training set, which is usually higher than the test set, showing um, two decimal places that way we can read it kind of as a percent like 0 0.79 would be 79 percent accurate etc so let's go ahead and run that now so the accuracy of the training set is 95 percent and the accuracy of the test set is 93 percent which is actually not too bad and that is based on the training using the KNN or K nearest neighbor algorithm. So next I want our neural network to sort through the KNN or the nearest neighbors to see at what point do we get the best predictions. Then I want to visualize that on a chart given a range that I tell it to. So let's start with copying and pasting this. So we want the training and testing accuracies. Then we'll go ahead and set the range of how many neighbors we want it to iterate through to find the best prediction. Then we'll create a for in loop to run that iteration. Nothing different so far. I created a variable for the classifier, called it CLF for short, attached it to K neighbors classifier. K neighbors is uh, in neighbors is in neighbors just like we would initiate or initialize a variable and, or constant in a class in Swift. Same deal and then of course, of course we have to train or fit that matrix. And we'll assign a score to the accuracy and as well as the test. So now we'll just create the plot for the graph and as well as the labels. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, the accuracy of the test set shows best using six neighbors. So that is going to conclude using KNN classifier. We will use a, another algorithm to see if we can further execute a more efficient prediction in our next lesson. See you there.